All right, welcome back to uh, another Fusion Monday. Today we're going to learn how to create a drawing using the title block from last week um, that we created. So um, we're going to make a drawing of this simple part um, in Fusion. So we're going to go design, drawing from design, and we are going to use our 8.5 by 11 title block. So it prints on the printer. And we click OK. And it's going to come up and populate our title, the title block that we already created. We're going to have to fill out some information down here. But the first thing we're going to do is we are going to make this a one-to-one -one ratio. And we're going to place our front view. And then we're going to go ahead and project our top, our right, and our isometric views in there. And then to clean this up, to get it set up, we're going to hit, we're going to shade the ISO. We're going to come down here and we are going to edit our title block. So um, the code for this class is IED. Remember, everything needs to be in capital letters. So go ahead and put your uh, caps lock on. And then the um, 050 for the 50 series. And this will be uh, 015. And this is 01. So... 50 series is Fusion Mondays. This is week 15, and uh, this is the first one of this week. Uh, the rev is the year dot one. This is our first uh, revision of this year. We're going to leave the weight out for now. Um, we do need to go over here and hit finish property, and we are going to come over here to material. And this is 6061 aluminum, and it will be raw. We can go ahead and click close, and we do not need page two because this will be a one-page document, so we'll go ahead and delete it. So now we have our sheet one. It's going to be drawn by me. We'll talk about checking it later. Oh, Rev didn't stick for some reason. I didn't hit enter. There we go. And we hit finish. Now, um, we're going to go ahead and get started on this. And as always, our first dimensions are always the three principal dimensions, the height, the width, and the depth of the part so that the manufacturer instantly knows um, how big we are uh, looking at when they're quoting it. So we're going to go ahead and start with the dimension tools. Ultimately, we want to balance out the dimensions. The goal here is to make this clean and easy to read. So we're going to put dimensions onto views that they can go on that are not um, going to have a lot of dimensions. So for example, we're going to have almost no dimension, dimensions on the right side view. So we're going to go ahead and put the top dimension here. And because this has been chamfered in the model, we're going to have to zoom in close to get those outer edges. Okay. And um, so that we're going to get our point 0.1 and our point 0.8. And then we're going to get our width. We'll put that here because we can get it out of the way of the other dimensions. So there are our three principal dimensions. We're telling it that it's a point, uh, not 0.19 by 0.19 by 0.8 square. So roughly, somebody's going to make this is going to start with 2 inch by 2 inch by 1 inch stock um, and machine it down to the shape. Now remember, the more specified we make anything, the more expensive the part becomes. So I always like to use the example of material, which we already placed here. If I had changed this to just aluminum, now the manufacturer has a, any aluminum they can get their hands on at the best price is going to be work. When I specify aluminum 6061, then now we've, we need to be in the 6061 series of aluminum, so their options go down. If I further specify T6, oops, T6, then the price goes down, goes up even more because now I'm being very, very specific. Now, you make these decisions as a designer based on the application of this part. If this part is going into a rocket motor, then you know what? You need to be very, very specific. If this part's going to go on a desk as, and to hold business cards, then you could get away with just saying, I want it out of aluminum. And obviously, the price point of a rocket motor part versus a business card holder is going to change um, dramatically. So that's one thing to remember, and that's important to remember on all the dimensions. Now, let's talk about this groove. So this is the first thing that we're going to do. Now, how we dimension this groove 
determines what's important as a designer. So if we dimension um, this dimension from here to here, we are telling the manufacturer it's very critical that this dimension meets all our, our tolerances of uh, 20 thousandths. Um, is that really important to us? I, I don't know what this part is. This part, let's say this is a, a part that bolts onto a table and it holds a railing or something. Um, probably this dimension is not important. There's a mating part that goes in this screw. This becomes the important dimension. This is more of, hey, I need material over there to bolt it down with. So let's remove this and let's specify the width here as being important. And all, all, this width, this is supposed to be, this is an idiosyncrasy of not being a part of the metric system of this is a 3 8 groove. So we need to increase the tolerance on it, both to get a tighter tolerance down here, but also to specify um, that it's a 3 8 groove. So we now have specified that, hey, this is the important width. Now we need to locate, where is this located? Once again, if I dimension from here to here, I'm saying it's important that it's from one edge, it's 0.76 to the start of the groove, and this groove is 0.375 wide, and then I don't really care how far the other edge is. In this application, it would matter if this is just part of a hand railing. In reality, what we probably want to do is not even put a dimension here, and we want to use a center mark to mark this is the center, and while we're at it, we'll mark this one up here. And what that's going to tell us is, hey, I want a groove that's 0.37 wide, uh, wide in the center of this block, right? That's what it's going to say, and that's what we want to do. Now, the second thing we have to do is tell it how deep the groove is. This can be done one of two ways. You can go from the bottom to here, specifying that that's a 0.55. It breaks a lot of rules having the dimension cross the part. But is that the important part, or is it important that the groove is 0.25 deep? Okay, that I can't, I, that's a design question. In our case, I think it's important that it's 0.25 deep. It's not as important as if it's 0.55. Now, if this was a mount to hold a rail in a long series of mounts and it needed to be uniform, then the 0.55 might be more important than the uh, 0.25, okay? So we can delete that. We, to clean this up, even though this is violating a rule about having dimensions crossing apart, I would probably stretch it out to the side to clearly show that center line and to show that groove. You do not dimension to a hidden line, and that's why we can't put it over there. Now, next we're gonna do um, the top. We need to worry about these holes. So first we need to put center marks. They look like crosshairs, right? So there's our little crosshairs. That will allow us to dimension to the center of this part. Now my first dimension would be from one edge to the center and 0.95. Now I could use some center marks to say, hey, I want these in the center, but a designer on such a simple part is gonna see the 95 and the 1.9 and be able to do the math and realize, okay, they want them in the center. So this is perfectly acceptable. And then from the center out, once again, we care about this dimension is the 0.57 versus from the edge over would indicate that we care about how far the hole is from the outside edge, or do we care about how far it is from the center? And considering this geometry is all being uh, dimensioned off the center, then um, we probably want to stay with that trend and dimension as many as much as our geometry off the center as possible. Now, because I have a center line and because I have not put other dimensions on this left side, I am implying that, hey, this is mirrored. And I will further imply that when I put on my uh, hole information, which says this is a 0.25 hole. Now, what I can do now is in the front side, I can put in 2x, which is going to specify that there are two of them, which further reinforces that, hey, this is just a mirror of that. And to be 
um, crystal clear, I could write through to say, hey, the hole goes all the way through. These hidden lines do specify that, but if I want to make sure I'm not confusing the manufacturer, that would be another way of doing it. Now, uh, two more things we got to cover. Um, it says break all edges down here to uh, deburr them, but this pro project's actually been specified to machine a chamfer, which is breaking the edges. So what we're going to do is we are going to, um, there is a couple of edges specifically here and here that are not chamfered. So we need to leave this so that they do remove any sharp edge on those in, on the bottom of the slot. But we need to now specify that, there is, that there's a chamfer. And I don't, there's no chamfering note in Fusion 360 as of this recording. So we're going to zoom in here and we're just going to make our own note. So I'm going to pull it out. And I am just going to say chamfer um, 0 0.01 was our specified chamfer. And by doing that, I'm implying everywhere they see the chamfer, that's what we're going to imply. You know, we could say typical at the end, but if I'm doing a chamfer and it's kind of going everywhere, the designer is going to realize, hey, that's what they're talking about. Now, the last thing we have to specify is there is some fillets in these corners. So we are going to go uh, dimension. And we are going to pull out a fillet out of this corner. Now, here's the problem. There's a fillet here. And when you zoom this out, it looks like, okay, there's four fillets. So I could approach this two ways. I could double click on this and type in TYP, which means typical. But I'll be honest, as a manufacturer, there's a good chance the manufacturer is going to miss the, the, the fillets that are here, here here and here, unless I provide them the model and I'm giving them a drawing only as a supplementary to the 3D model that I've provided. But if they are just getting provided this, there's a good chance they're gonna overlook those fillets. So TYP is really not our best approach. Our better approach would be to put 8X in the front, which then tells the manufacturer, oh, wait a minute, I see these four. Oh, they must mean also these four on the inside. It's a little clearer, less likely for you to get back a part that's not what you designed. So um, this part now is fully dimensioned. You could ship this to any manufacturer in the world. They should be able to read this and give you an accurate quote for um, what you're looking to build. Thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Have a good day. Bye-bye.